Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Flynn. And recently we had the chance to go to the Advanced Light Source, a facility in Berkeley, California that produces X-ray light that scientists use for experiments. We crystallize borax used in laundry detergent and use the Advanced Light Source to see its internal structure. But before we get into that, let's see how the Advanced Light Source works. This is a model of a synchrotron light source. It accelerates and bends the beam of electrons to produce some of the world's brightest X-rays. The electrons start out in a linear accelerator. Then the electrons enter the booster ring, which speeds them up. Next, the electrons enter the storage ring, where they are sped up to and kept at 99.99995% the speed of light. Let's go inside the synchrotron. The electron beam travels through a vacuum better than that of space. The electrons are speeding around at close to the speed of light. They get separated. These magnets focus them back together. When the electrons get wiggled, they release x-rays. Scientists use these x-rays to visualize small structures. Magnets bend the electrons, producing a beam of synchrotron light. When the X-rays exit the beam, they get bent for safety. One use of the X-rays is to find the structure of crystals using diffraction. Diffraction is when an X-ray hits a crystal and makes a diffraction path, revealing its structure. We are using the advanced light source to gain insight into a science experiment that is run in classrooms around the world. The experiment is to make slime out of borax and PVA. But our search of resources found that there were no animations of how borax and PVA's molecular structures combine to form slime. This is where the advanced light source comes in. Our science experiment is to scan borax, PVA, and the resulting slime to better understand how they combine at a molecular level. We have already scanned borax at the ALS. To scan something using diffraction, you first need to crystallize it. To crystallize a substance, you first make a supersaturated solution. To do this, you pour borax or whatever you want to crystallize it into a tub of hot water. Then you mix them together with a scupula. You then pour the supersaturated mixture into a petri dish and wait for the water to evaporate. Then you have some nice crystals. Next, we take the crystals to the advanced light source. The first step at the ALS is to use a polarizing light microscope to check that the sample is a single crystal. Then we mount the crystal on a pen and put the pen in a hutch under a stream of liquid nitrogen to slow the atom's natural movements. Then we open the shutter and let the beam in and spin our sample to get a 3D model of the crystal. When it's finished scanning, we can analyze the data immediately. This is us cleaning up the data from the borax sample. The structure of borax gives us only part of the answer. In order to find the rest of the answer, we need to scan the structure of PVA and the resulting slime. We will have to use a different beamline that is more suitable for scanning polymer liquids. We've reached out to other scientists at the advanced light source and should be able to run our new scan in 2015. When we are finished analyzing our data, we plan to create an animation that we will post online that can be used to help teachers explain how the slime experiment works in their classroom. 